Through all these earthly trials of sorrow Through all these days of mortal sin Through all these eternal nights of no tomorrow uh, My name is Sturgill Simpson. I'm from originally from Jackson, Kentucky. I'm a professional van driver who also sings and writes country songs. I get a haircut like every year and a half. It just kind of comes and goes. Haircuts either follow immediately a trip to either an extremely hot place or a very rainy place. And I just kind of hit the panic button. Well, lately things have been a little complicated. Quality life has got me down. Well, sex is cheap and it's all me so great. First time I met him, I was out seeing uh, what's his face? We were at Billy Joe Schaefer. Billy Joe show. Schaefer show. Yeah, I was yeah. there with Jamie Johnson and Shooter Jennings. And Shooter looks at me. He's like, "See that guy over there? That guy's the best country singer in Nashville." And he was talking about Sturgill, and I was like, "He looks like an asshole." <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking to him. He looked mean. Before I knew him, I thought he was. I thought he was a mean guy. You know. I've always loved playing with other people. And all these guys are young, exceptionally talented players, and you know they've all got really great input and opinions. Like I don't, I don't like revolving doors. I hope I turn around in 20 years and they're all still behind me. But the most beautiful part of it is watching all these young, talented guys and being able to formulate that and kind of carve out the sound that I do here in my head. They start contributing their own feel and heart to it as well, and it becomes this, this other thing entirely. And I think that's probably what people are responding to so much on the new record is that, you know, those songs were very, very personal, but those guys all spent a year on the road helping me bring them to life. We, the intention was to make records that people want to listen to all the way through. And even Dave and I had to get to know each other. That first yeah. record, you know, it was still, different personalities and ideas and you always wonder like well who you know but now after a year and a half we're, we're actually really close friends and when we went in the studio with this one we didn't really have to talk about it at all he just after getting to know me and, and what I like you know um, I think it was like one really brief conversation he's like yeah cool got it There's guitars and there's guitars, and it either just feels good and feels inspiring. But I mean, there's nothing special about it. It's just a D28, but uh, it's been very good to me. And and I've played it so much now that it I think it sounds better than a lot of the old ones. I don't know why I would even need another one, you know. It just kind unless it gets stolen or broken, and if that's meant to be, then we'll deal with it then. But for now, it's been they carved my name in it. If they do steal it, you know, they it's still mine. Hit that road, start looking for the end of the long way. You used to play a lot of electric guitar, and you spend so much time chasing your tone. And you can get on stage, and even with a, even if there's an incompetent sound guy, if you're playing an electric, you still have somewhat of a direct control over what your ears are hearing. But acoustic players, you're just at the mercy of so many variables that are completely out of your control. To be perfectly honest, I've, I've always hated the sound of acoustic pickups or that piezo sound you always hear like at the Tootsies at the airport when you're walking through the gate. And um, for a long time I would always try to use like a, a condenser or, or an omnidirectional mic and like they just look at you like it ain't gonna fly. I finally met Lloyd, he came to a show, we played at the basement and then I was on tour last year going up, up the west coast and, and stopped by St. Louis Obispo at the factory to say hi and he had been working on the lyric and uh, he's like, you know, and I, I explained to him what I just what I just told you, and he's like, well, I may have something you'd be interested in. And he's like, you know, I've got a couple of these out on the road with some some big guys playing in big name stadium bands, 
And he's like, but I don't have anybody to really test it in the clubs. And I was like, you know, if you, I was like, well, if you want me to do the Pepsi Challenge, man, I'm your guy, you know, because we, we're playing some dive ass bars. And uh, yeah, he, he installed it right there. And and that, that's been about a year, man. And I don't, everywhere I go, anybody who plays acoustic guitar, I basically just tell them, like, if you don't have one of these, you're not, you're not hearing your instrument, you know. Well, one thing about your sound is a big part of your band is how driven the acoustic is, how much the acoustic rhythmically drives the band. Yeah. And before Miles you installed this whole system in, you couldn't, it always sound like anemic DI or something yeah. like that. Really and this thin, actually, that brittle, thin, yeah. ugh, it's the worst sound ever. And now when I'm on stage with the band, I feel like I can hear my guitar. Well, the hardest thing is the way we recorded the record and the way we're doing this, this session today is, uh, is we're tracking everybody in the same room live and there's no headphones, and there's no separation between the acoustic guitar and the drum set. And so what that DI allows us to, to pull this off, otherwise you'd have a, a mic picking up a lot of other things around it, and the acoustic would be washed out and small, and probably just sound anemic. And uh, this allows us to get the acoustic as crack loud as we want to. a lot of anger and aggression in the way he plays an acoustic guitar and without having the ability to control that or ability to raise it up louder in the mix I feel like the it wouldn't it wouldn't be representative of, of who he is and what the sound is you know so that allows us to just really get up there and crank it and not have drums bleeding in the acoustic which is kind of a crazy thing in a live setting you know and it's a microphone Like a blanket of love Gotta walk that road 